After a sizzling week one, let's get ready for week two of the Texas high school football season. These are the picks. Welcome into the picks, your guide to the Texas high school football weekend. My name is Greg Tepper of Dave Campbell's Texas Football and TexasFootball.com. Thank you so much for tuning in and after a blistering hot season opening week of the 2023 Texas high school football season, we are off and running. What a week one it was. Uh, upsets around the pl around the state. You had thrillers, overtime games. You had a three nothing game. It was a wild opening salvo to the 2023 campaign. And the great news is that we're only getting started. Another giant slate of games everywhere you look across the state of Texas. We're going to cover the biggest ones here. We're going to start in Central Texas. 7 o'clock Friday night at Cougar Stadium in China Spring. How about a number one versus number one matchup as the number one Melissa Cardinals out of 5A Division 2 take on the number one China Spring Cougars out of 4A Division 1. What are the keys to this matchup? Key number one, a true quarterback duel. So for Melissa, last week's win over Argyle was wildly impressive. Everything they did, they did really well, and especially offensively. They ran the ball very well with running back Nathan Odejokun. I think he's going to be the real star of the show. But I think their quarterback, Trevor Ham, is a real unsung hero in this one. They didn't ask him to do a ton last week, but he's been very efficient. He's coming off of a 3,000-yard passing campaign last season. He looks ready to take that step an absolute command of this offense. On the other side for China Spring, you know who it is. It's Cash McCollum back after guiding the Cougars to a state championship. Uh, and I, what I think is so amazing is how much he's grown. When he was a sophomore at Wimberley, he looked pretty darn good. Last year, he clearly took a step in his development. And right now, the early returns are that he's taking another one of those steps. He could be one of the very best quarterbacks in the state by the time it's all said and done. This is a big time showdown, number one versus number one, and you're gonna need QB one to step up. So which of these quarterbacks handles the moment better? Key number two, Melissa's trench advantage. So this is a China Spring team that does have some of their stars back, but loses a lot of the worker bees, loses a lot of the nuts and bolts of their team, and that includes in the trenches, where they're in a bit of a reload period. Now, they've got guys that I really like. I think Caden Xline is a star up front on the offensive side. Graydon Grimes on the defensive front should be an anchor for them, but make no mistake, this is still piecing things together, figuring out what works. Not the case with Melissa. They are ready. They are ready for prime time. They are ready to contend right now, and they are loaded. Offensively, Owen Hollenbeck leads a very good offensive line that absolutely pounded Argyle last week. And defensively, Nigel Smith is one of the most terrifying edge rushers in the state of Texas, and that is going to be a real challenge for this China Spring team. Melissa, simply by virtue of being a 5A team versus a 4A team, should have a trench advantage. Then when you look at the playmakers they've got on the offensive and defensive lines, the advantage becomes even more stark. China Spring can't get dominated up front or else this game is over before it starts. So can the Cougars mitigate that advantage or will the push up front for Melissa be too much? And key number three, McClendon County Magic. So China Spring is the back-to-back -back 4A state champs. They won the 4A Division II state championship in 2021. They won the 4A Division I state championship in 2022. Things are good in Cougar country. And one of the reasons why is that they do not lose at home. They are very difficult to beat at Cougar Stadium. They have won 10 straight. They have won 13 of their last 14 at Cougar Stadium. You have to go all the way back to 2020, the regular season finale, with a one-point loss to, I believe, state-ranked Waco Connolly in over over time to find the last time that somebody knocked off the Cougars at home. That's the challenge facing Melissa. Go in and break a streak. Go in and do something that almost nobody does, which is walk into Cougar Stadium and come away with a win. So can the home field advantage be an advantage for China Spring? Who am I picking? I'm going with Melissa. I think that Melissa actually goes on the road and gets a win at a very difficult place to play because the offensive balance here is pretty amazing. Week one, I don't want to overstate one result, but what they did against state-ranked Argyle is really impressive. Nathan Odojoku in their running back was fantastic. Trevor Ham was efficient. The offensive line was dominant. And then on the defensive side, they really suffocated that Argyle attack. That's what's going to be the challenge for Cash McCollum and this China Spring offense. They have got to find that balance. They've 
got to find a way to be versatile and do a lot of different things. They're certainly capable of doing it. I think there's an argument that Cash McCollum is the most talented player on the field in this game, but it's going to take a lot from the China Spring offensive and defensive lines to hold up against these bigger and physical Melissa fronts. I think this game has an opportunity to be fun into the fourth quarter, but I think Melissa pulls away. I think the Cardinals get a win. Let's go to Houston, 7 o'clock Friday night at Turner Stadium in Humble. It is a top 10 6A clash between the Atascacita Eagles and the Katy Tigers. KD coming off of their week one win over Clear Springs, where for the first three quarters they looked very KD, Trey KD. Very, very much like the Tigers are used to looking. They ran the ball exceptionally well with Romel Jordan, their new bell cow running back. They threw the ball pretty efficiently, and their defense was terrific. It was all good. Until the fourth quarter. Fourth quarter, and I don't know if they were ever going to lose that game, but got a little dicey. In part because the secondary kind of got exposed by this Clear Springs passing attack. And that could be problematic going up against an Atascacita offense that is loaded. Loaded, loaded, loaded. Quarterback Zion Brown, wide receiver Jelani Watkins, superstar hammer running back Tory Blaylock. This team has a lot of different ways to beat you, and the KD defense is going to need to be ready. I think a lot of this game comes down to Gunnar Nelson, the new KD quarterback, who is very efficient in their win over Clear Springs. He's got to hit a couple of big plays to loosen up this Atascacita defense, and then it's on the Atascacita defense to prove that they have a championship caliber defense. Now, Atascacita has never beaten KD. Never. Zero times. But I think they do it this week. I think the Eagles get a win over Katy. Let's go to the small school. 7.30 p.m. Friday night at Tiger Stadium in Centerville. It's a top 10 clash in the 2A ranks as the Centerville Tigers take on the Crawford Pirates. And if you love wide open, air it out, spread offense, firework factory type stuff, just hitting home run after home run, do not go to this game. This game is two teams that want to take sledgehammers to one another and see which one breaks. Uh, these are two very physical, hard-charging running teams, and they are going to line it up for our amusement on Friday night, and it's going to be a lot of fun if you're into that kind of thing. Centerville is a run game defense team. They're going to give the ball to guys like Andrew Newman and Terrell Brooks, and they're going to grind it out on the ground and lean on what has been a fantastic defense. Crawford is going to do the same thing. Turn to guys like Brady Ward and line it up and pound you and pound you and pound you and then play great defense. A lot of this game is going to be come down to who can hold up defensively for, for 48 minutes. That's the real question because these are two very physical ball clubs that pride themselves on being the toughest, the most physical. This game is going to be low scoring. I think if this game were to get, in, if one of these teams were to get in the 30s, I'd be pretty shocked. Uh, I think this game is going to be low scoring, hard hitting, a lot of Old school pugilistic football, right? It's the good, the good stuff. I think Centerville comes away with a narrow win. And let's go up to the Panhandle. 7 o'clock Friday night at EL Sam Bass Stadium in Stratford. It is a top 10 2A clash between the Stratford Elks and the Sunray Bobcats. And it is now my pleasure to introduce you to one of my very favorite players in the state, Sunray quarterback Armando Luan. Maybe you haven't heard of him, but this kid is awesome. He was the state's leading passer last year, threw for nearly 4,500 yards, and he is in his bag. He's been fantastic, got a number of big time weapons on the outside like Damian Barragon. This team is really fun to watch offensively. Last week, they beat a team from Oklahoma. He threw for like 388 yards and four touchdowns. This kid's a machine. This offense is a machine. They're a lot of fun. Now they got to go on the road to a top 10 Stratford team and prove that they're a contender. Prove that they're not just a fun team, they're a great team because this Stratford team is a great team. Plain and simple. Coming off of a shutout win over Spearman last week, their defense was fantastic. They have a player that I love, Bryce Braden, who's their quarterback slash linebacker. This kid is unfair for the 2A level. He is a lot of fun to watch. So if you love individual stars, you will love this matchup. A lot of this game is like a referendum on Sunray. There's a team we like. It's a, it's, it's, I've joked that it's everyone's second favorite team because they're just so much fun to watch. But now they need to take that step towards being a contender and being a team that can make stops defensively, that can uh, grind it out if they need to, that can win tough games on the road against statewide contenders like, like Stratford. This is a real moment for Sunray. I think Stratford's got to be your favorite, especially at home. I think the Elks come away with a win. But those are far from the only big games in week two of the Texas high school football season. Let's get to the lightning round. 
Playing for what feels like the millionth time in the last three years, I like Grandview to beat Malakoff, give me hooks to stay hot with a win over Cooper, and I'm going to go with Alito over Denton Geyer. I like Madisonville over Navasota, El Paso, Pebble Hills beats El Paso Del Valle, and I think South Oak Cliff bounces back with a win over Lancaster. I like WOS over LCM, that's West Orange Stark over Little Cypress Mauriceville. I'm going to go to Johnson City to take down Thrall and give me Lovejoy to get a win over Argyle. Battle of two teams that looked really good in week one, I like Katie Tompkins to get by Bridgeland. Give me Midland Legacy to beat Amarillo Tascosa, and Canadian beats Bushland. Give me Wink over Ozona. Troop takes down Price Carlisle, and is Louisville about to walk into Highlander Stadium and beat Highland Park? I think so. I'm going with Lyford over La Villa. Did you guys see what San Antonio Wagner did last week? Woof, I think they beat Dripping Springs. And give me Wimberley to beat San Antonio Piper. I'm going with Agua Dolce over Freer. Give me Gainesville over Vernon. And it's the Crosstown Showdown in the big country. I like Abilene over Abilene Cooper. Sybil of Steel stays hot with a win over Lake Travis. Jim Ned stays hot with a win over Holiday. And I like Brenham to get by Belton. Give me Edna over Bay City. I like Corpus Christi Miller to take down El Campo. And Wall beats Cisco. Give me Mason over Brady. Texas High gets a win over Colleyville Heritage to move to 2-0. And in a matchup of East Texas teams in desperate need of a bounce back, I like Gilmer over Kilgore. A rivalry renewed, I like Longview over Marshall. Newton finally starts their season. They beat Woodville, and the Woodlands takes down Houston Lamar. Give me Spring Westfield over Fort Bend Hightower. Tanaha over San Augustine, and Mission Veterans Memorial beats McAllen Memorial. I like Cuero to beat Geronimo Navarro. PSJA North stays hot with a win over Los Fresnos, and Killeen Harker Heights beats Smithson Valley. I like Panhandle to beat Friona. Waco Connolly in a very close one over Waco La Vega. And give me Cameron Yo over Yoakum. Pottsboro takes takes down Kalisbergen in our six-man game of the week. Really excited about this one. I think Klondike stays hot with a win over Jayton. And those are the picks. What am I wrong about? Which games did I leave out? Leave comments down below. Don't forget that subscribe button. Follow us on Twitter at DCTF. Like us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Dave Campbells. Follow us on Instagram. Instagram.com slash Dave Campbells. And of course, see us at TexasFootball.com. Thanks for watching. Enjoy week two of the Texas high school football season. We'll see you.